Chapter 3. How to optimize supply chains through reverse networks. Reverse logistics is considered to be a key aspect to the circular economy, capturing the value of end-of-life goods and facilitating the reuse and recycle pillars of the circular model. This covers not only the collection and transport of materials and products, but value-added activities such as testing, sorting, refurbishing, recycling, and redistribution. Businesses should evaluate their entire system, looking at the wider business model and the design phase to make sure that products and materials can be reused, remanufactured, recycled, or repaired. Just as important as forward logistics, which powers global trade through the transport of materials, goods and informations, is reverse logistic. There are three main reverse logistic solutions to turn global supply chains into supply loops or cycles. Create reverse networks, reorganize and streamline material flows, develop innovative demand-focused business models. We will now see the three of them separately. Creating value in a circular economy can mean the reuse, maintenance, refurbishment, repairability and remanufacturing of components and products. Organizations, together with their stakeholders, need to carefully evaluate the opportunities to create value after the use phase. To evaluate the residual value of a product or material flow, companies will ideally organize their reverse cycle network across different product and material components with the same sophistication they use for their main activities. To get the full value from closing material loops, it is important to establish a smooth and pure material flows across the value chain. This goes back to the roots of supply chain management, basic high volume materials complemented by a specialty materials were needed. Collaborative approaches might be required to organize supply chains that make reprocessing materials more efficient and cost effective which cooperate along the supply cycles and cooperate with competitors. Business model innovation will be critical to mainstreaming the uptake of the circular economy principle in more business-to-business -business setups and in business-to-customer. Business model innovation could take into account different circular design strategies, as for instance, design of product life extension services and design of products as a service. Advancing new access over ownership and take-back models will further accelerate the adoption of circular economy business models. IKEA, for example, is working on its reverse logistics as part of the company's sustainability strategy, creating opportunities to recycle and reuse products. IKEA is not only acting in a more sustainable manner and reducing the company's environmental footprint, it is also increasing engagement with cons consumers and creating positive economic opportunities for the company. An infrastructure is necessary to ensure the collection of the discarded products and their transport to the recovery process. Once a product is produced and sold, the manufacturer's control level over the further fate of the product reduces dramatically and it's, it is generally rather difficult to track where the products are and what state they reach end of life and how to return them back for remanufacturing. Tracking and managing used products collection information and organizing the return from remanufacturing, material recycling and energy recovery represents a high share of transaction costs. In order to close the loops of resources and materials, used products need to be collected, 
Then, either prepared for reuse by simply repairing and reselling to second-hand market, or remanufacturing for, for reselling. Then, the rest are sent to material recycling or energy and material recovery. Within the reverse logistics, two types of transport can be differ differentiated. The first one is the one responsible for collecting and transferring the product from the user to the collection point, where the selection and sorting of the product is carried out for the subsequent treatment. This first transport is the most controversial since it depends to a large extent on factors that are difficult to control. In a circular economy, these obstacles must be saved to ensure the success of the first transport. Because users of end-of-life or end-of-use products trigger reverse flows, they need to be included in the reverse logistics. To get their products back, company can incentivize their users to return them. The second, transport, moves the product from the collection point to the center in which the revalorization process will be carried out. This transport is not so problematic since these routes are already developed and are easier to control and monitor, although it does depend on the type of product. Users are more willing to take part in the logistics of returning the item if they think it still has a value. The key motivators are reward and convenience. Users will more likely return an item if it is easy to do it or if, or if they are rewarded somehow. If the value is low or non-existent, it needs to be very easy for the user to return it. Items of medium value can be recovered using take-back programs. And when items have a high value, users are likely to sell it or swap it using platforms such as OLX, eBay or Wallapop. In the case of the furniture industry, most companies offer to pick up the old furniture when the new one is delivered for an on-the-spot swap. There are two main types of reverse logistics, centralized and decentralized ones. The reverse logistics is more centralized when the official manufacturer is involved because they provide more revalorization options and therefore ensure a more efficient valorization tailored to each type of product. In contrast, decentralized reverse logistics is more unpredictable and less effective. The time elapsed between the disposal by the user and the recovery process can be extended. There is more likelihood that the product will get stuck on the way and never receive a recovery treatment. The further away a collection point is from the official manufacturer, the recovery options are reduced. In a circular economy, the following are considered revalorization processes. Reuse first-hand, repair, reuse second-hand, renovate, recondition, remanufacture, recovery of parts, recycle, and energy revalorization. However, some barriers arise with the revalorization processes. Here we can see some obstacles related to the revalorization in the furniture sector. For instance, reuse. Whilst reuse of furniture is common, this tends to be on a small scale and with local social goals in mind rather than larger scale environmental and economic ones. Repair and refurbishment. In many parts of the EU, transport and local cost and labor costs are high, making any significant repair and refurbishment costly, particularly where reupholstery is require, required. Second hand market. There is a weak demand for second hand furniture. The price differential between new furniture against the cost of second life furniture 
is not significant enough to drive more sustainable purchasing behavior. Recovery of parts, limited collection and reverse logistic infrastructure. Recycle, poor demand for recycled materials and markets for recycled materials. Post deconstruction are underdeveloped and in some cases already saturated with these associated market failures restricting further investment in recovery. Now we will see an example of reverse logistics in the construction sector. In the case of the dismantling phase of a building, the broader context need, needs to be analyzed. After the long use phase, the final main resource impact occurs after decades. Taking this into account, the planning of those logistic processes has to be different. When preparing for reuse, three different concepts were used by, ba by the Bau Carousel project in Austria. The reuse at the same construction site, the reuse at another construction site of the same project developer, and the reuse at construction sites of other project developers. The experts of the project provide some recommendations related to these three concepts. The earlier experts analyze the potential for reuse and high quality recycling, the higher the chances are to realize those potentials. The knowledge of the material composition is crucial to analyze the potential regarding circular economy and the use of building information modeling can help to plan the dismantling process in the same way like the construction phase. Now that you understand how reverse logistics works, think about a product you recently discarded or returned and describe the different steps you imagine it went through from the moment you decided to discard it to the type of revalorization process it will go through. Remember to think about the centralized or decentralized option, the type of transport, the collection point, the second transport, the agents involved, the materials flow, the business model, etc.